Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 24 of the front dash build. In this video we'll look at the standby attitude indicator and we'll take a close look at its step-by-step -step physical construction. Let's buckle up. Just as a recap to the last video in the series, we took some time to look closely at the design and some of the considerations around that for the standby attitude indicator. Based on initial research and a, a number of tests, I arrived at the design we see on screen, which is our blueprint now. And in this video, we're now looking to construct this physically. I did produce two slight variants of the fascia, the only difference between the two being that one would accommodate 3mm spacers. Although it does make sense to use a thicker spacer, particularly for a panel that's going to be suspending in place a large number of components, for this particular panel the dimensions are so tight and there's so much we're trying to fit into it and get it squeezed into the front dash frame, we need to shave off every millimetre where we can. And we can see that now where we put the attitude cylinder in place and we look at its rotation. And the concern here is as it rotates, will it catch the spacers or other components that will be in place at the rear? And where it looks like there's a tight fit, the easiest option is to keep reducing the dimensions of the attitude cylinder. But the trouble is the more that the circumference or the width of that is reduced, the more it diminishes the aesthetic of what the final panel will be. So we therefore look to shave uh, millimetres off it wherever else we can. And I therefore look to use the M2 spacers. Before building up all of the rear layers, I just do a test fit of this into the frame. And also take some extra time just to look at the rear profile of this and to think through not just where the panel as we've designed it will sit, but also where we'll put in place all of the supporting PCBs. In this case, the PCBs will take up a fair amount of space and I'm quite fortunate that the UHF panel that we can see the rear of on the left there, the UHF repeater, is one that doesn't extend back very far. So what I intend to do in this case is, at the rear of the UHF repeater panel, have the brackets and supports in place to hold the PCBs, which will electronically control the standby attitude indicator. The following steps are to 3D print some of the rear supporting layers and I've just put in place the one there we can see which will hold the NEMA 8. I spend a bit of time to just get the distance that that's mounted away from the fascia correct so the attitude cylinder can sit snugly in place but rotate as it needs to. We can now move on to some of the 3D prints for the front profile of the panel. For anything that's 3D printed that will be able to be seen, I tend to do some work on that post print. And before we look at that, we'll just take a moment to have a glance at a loose fit of this part. Once that's cleaned up, it should look good. And also to mention at this point that the flag indicator we're going to put in place will be a 3mm red LED. We can also see now the 3D print of the small enclosure, which I hold the rotary encoder. And again, we can take a brief look at a loose fit of this. As mentioned in the last video where we looked at the design of this, we are fortunate that the profile of this particular panel is raised. Now, I think if this was mounted on its own, it would look quite out of place but when it's combined with the other raised profile together it does form something which looks fine and it's in keeping broadly with what's in the sim. As this item is further developed we can see a reprint now in black PLA and we can see that along with some opal acrylic which has been CNC machined, engraved and cut. Now the knob that we plan to use for this rotary encoder will be the same type that we use for the CMSC panel and it's one we can see in the background there which will be trimmed at the bottom to make it shorter and painted a matte black just to give it more of a military look. With these parts both a little further developed now we can 
add the epoxy compound which the resin just to smooth it and we can then sand it and clean it up and at the point we see now it's ready to be primed and painted and we'll come back to this a little bit later on to see what that looks like as it's installed and again we've got quite a few of the 3d parts to print here these are the ones with a couple of very small revisions for holding in place the X27 style stepper and also the mounting of the trigger arm for the optical sensor. It's worth taking a close look now at the stepper and how it's mounted. This is for the pitch axis because this really is quite a key part for suspending in place the attitude cylinder. We now work our way down to the very rear of this panel and at that point we can feed all the wiring through and just check that it's all moving as it should. So if it all looks good, looks like it will trigger the optical sensor just fine. And for the attitude cylinder I've printed onto paper a scaled image of all the marker lines which I can now stick directly onto this and at the rear of the print off I've used double sided sticky tape. So let's take a close look at that. And this is scaled as I needed it given the particular dimensions I'm working to and this will differ for anyone else building it for their sim pit based on their overall plans. And what we can see on screen is a number of revisions as we went through all the various tests and it evolved to a point that it now works effectively. We'll now go ahead and mount this in place. For pointer needles I normally use a very small piece of hollow brass tubing which is pinched slightly at the one end so it really grasps onto the shaft of the stepper this is a little bit different for, for this one here. And what I will be doing with this one is once it's all in place and correctly calibrated, I'll just put a slight dab of glue onto it just to ensure it is fully adhesed to that shaft. So I now begin to run a series of calibration tests. I've marked out on this scale print off what will be the necessary stroke of the linear servo actuator that we're going to use. Given the maximum and minimum points this will need to extend to when it's applied and it's curved at that point, I need the stroke, the range of movement of that linear servo to be somewhere as a minimum between 12 and 14 millimetres. And what we can see on screen is the one we're going to use and that should be able to move within that range. So whilst I wouldn't normally expect a servo of such a limited range of motion to be used in many parts of the sim pit, it does work just perfectly for its application here. I think it's worth mentioning that I did look at a number of different linear servo types and as we can see here the one on the left was one of a, a better quality, albeit slightly bigger, um, and it, there was a lot less chatter on that one. However, what became clear in the tests is, again, because of the limited dimensions, how the smaller one, the smallest one we could get, was really the one we'd, we would use. This is just one of a whole heap of tests I did on this type of servo. As you can see, there is a fair amount of jitter in its movement, but once it's secured in place with a mounting bracket, that should be more limited. After a series of tests and understanding how to get the best from the servo and selecting the one which had the best and smoothest movement, I then use that as the one to put in place. Here we can see a very small bracket that I've designed and 3D printed, which will just hold it snugly in place at the rear of the fascia. I attached the 3D printed miniature aircraft arm to the actuator of the servo. And I can then start to look applying some paint. We can now see the rotary encoder enclosure now that it's had some post print work done. We can then fit that in place and feed all the wiring through to the back of the fascia and they'll run down and follow the path of the spacers and then break out to the PCBs. The next key part which has also had some post print work is the remaining part of the fascia, the raised profile. 
With this in place, it'll look to really complete the front of the panel. And in terms of replicating the warning flag, of, as mentioned previously, use a three millimeter red LED. And we'll just run a small test on that now, just to see how that looks. Check that it's all working okay before we fix everything else in place. So that looks fine. The next part of the design is a very much a one step back for two steps forward. I need to remove the UHF panel as we can see on screen now. Because the PCBs and the easy driver boards that we see now will be held in place at the rear of the UHF panel. And as that's now built up, we can see the final bracket which holds all of the circuitry needed. At this later stage in the build, we can take this unit as shown on screen, but now look to wire that up and wire it into the standby attitude indicator. What we have on screen now is our final completed panel. It took a fair amount of time to reach this point, given the testing and revisions and overall design and then its construction to this point. And we're at a really exciting point now where in the next video in this series, we'll look to bring this panel online, run some operation tests and implement it into the front dash. Thanks for watching.